The potential for cars and buses running on hydrogen is vast. Several car manufacturers are committed to hydrogen-powered cars, also known as fuel cell electric vehicles. We're entirely committed to our yeah. 2015 target of series production. We'll have vehicles available at that time. And uh, you know, we believe that uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles can offer um, a great alternative to current gasoline and uh, petrol internal combustion engines. The rollout starts, uh, we had uh, said between uh, 2014 and 2015, we will start with uh, delivering the cars and we have to go now uh, very carefully forward uh, and see that the infrastructure starts there where we, where we see the customer. And mm. that's a very important thing uh, for the rollout plan, where the most infrastructure is, where we then there we can bring the most cars. Mm. So I'm looking forward to series production uh, of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles from Hyundai in the future and, and hitting our target of availability for 2015. We don't have any business in operating a refueling station unless we have hydrogen cars. And hydrogen cars will not come unless we have hydrogen refueling stations. So this is highly important that we can make projects and events like this where it's a coordinated approach and where we have the automotive OEMs supplying cars at the same time as we've got the refueling station. Honda itself, like all other OEMs working in this business, have fallen in love with this technology also knowing that hydrogen is essential in that aspect. When we look at uh, new technologies, uh, we need all new technologies, not only to focus on uh, electric mobility, for example, because there is not a unique solution. And hydrogen has a real potential. Now we have to convince maybe the authority to support more, as they did for electric mobility. This is then comparable to that what we do have with a modern equipped diesel engine. That means, of course, Euro, Euro 6 with a lot of uh, exhaust gas after treatment system. But that is, of course, the current uh, situation and that is uh, the competition we are working against. Um, I think we are well on track and we will meet that uh, next generation, which is uh, down the road the next few years. Uh, and, of course, we are looking intensively for the right uh, uh, hydrogen infrastructure. But the issue is to solve the chicken and egg problem, so is to find a, an agreement between the car makers and the infrastructure players so that effectively you build the stations so that people can use the cars, but that the people sell the cars so that the stations are filled up. So uh, I'm still very optimistic, maybe because I, I was in the field and the sales activity in my past, but at least I'm pretty convinced that we can... Uh, uh, let's say, get uh, the support from the authorities everywhere in Europe because they will understand that uh, hydrogen is a real must. Our message has been on 21st of this month, our CEO said we will provide cars to Japan, the United States and to Europe from 2015 onwards on larger scale. This is our commitment. We began our fuel cell program in 1998. Today, we are announcing that we are ready to turn years of testing into a commercial reality. By the end of this year, we will begin building IX35 fuel cells for public and private fleets in Europe. A key point to accomplish a large-scale rollout of fuel cell electric vehicles is investments in hydrogen infrastructure. The international consultant firm McKinsey, together with the leading car manufacturers, concluded that there is a cumulative economic gap of approximately 3 billion euros to establish a basic hydrogen supply infrastructure across Europe by 2020. In fact, the real economic challenge during the first 10 years is almost completely determined by the higher purchase price of the vehicles, not by the cost of the hydrogen infrastructure. The cost of the infrastructure is 5% of the total cost of ownership and will not hinder its rollout. Having said that, a coordinated investment plan supported with public funds is required to build up the first critical network of hydrogen stations, given the poor profitability of the very first stations used by few vehicles. The total cost of ownership of battery electric vehicles, fuel cell electric vehicles, plug-in hybrid vehicles and internal combustion engines is expected to converge after 2025 or earlier with tax exemptions or incentives during the ramp-up phase. 
In January 2013, the European Commission presented Clean Power for Transport, a European Alternative Fuel Strategy. The Member States are required to build up an infrastructure for different alternative fuels, among them hydrogen. Seeing the potential, the commitment from the car industry and the coming regulations from the EU, Swedish stakeholders launched a national study as a part of the HIT project in June 2013.